My name is Darren Pelly. I'm from Sterling, Massachusetts in the United States. I'm here today just to talk about my experiences with my uh, out-of-body NDE, near-death experiences in the ones I've had when I was younger, all through my 20s, and the final one I had 20 years ago at age 30. Let you know about that experience and how it has affected my life throughout the last 20 years. I grew up in uh, Saugus, Massachusetts, north of Boston, maybe about uh, 10, 15 minutes on the shore. Grew up in an Irish Catholic household, and my mom was the main foundation of my faith, Roman Catholic, Christian, and we were going to church on most Sundays. She would take me and my older, three older brothers to Mass and got us through all of our sacraments, all the way through Confirmation, which was a, a wonderful foundation that led me into a more spiritual life, as I'll describe later on. So was with my mom and dad all the way to probably 26-ish, going through college. I graduated from college with an engineering degree in, in plastics and started my career. And at age nine, I, I came down with uh, insulin-dependent diabetes. And, uh, from that, certain insulin low blood sugar reaction occurred in my teens and in my 20s. From those reactions, I basically would go completely unconscious. It's basically the insulin takes all the sugar out of your body and then consumes it into the cells and you black out and you go unconscious and your body's, your body's literally trying to stay alive and you don't know anything. You're, you're not aware you're in a coma, basically. I've had certain blood sugar, low blood sugar reactions in my teens. I had type 1 diabetes at age 9. And those were quite interesting as far as how they correlated to the my last NDE that I had. My last NDE kind of worked so much knowledge that correlated to all the other low blood sugar reaction NDEs. And they are all near-death experiences. For I know that when I was younger, I was in peace and a really bright, bright light during my teens and 20s, my low blood sugars. And I was unconscious in a coma. My body was curled up fetal position on the floor, soaking wet in sweat, some death gargles on certain occasions. And at those times, I was basically totally at peace. I couldn't feel a thing, was in no harm. On some occasions, there were bright lights, bright whiteness of, of a calming peace. And when someone found me in these reactions, luckily in my teens and my early 20s, they would administer some glucose sugar into my mouth and I would slowly come out of them, which was very painful to come out, not physically, but spiritually it was. It was, to me, I described it as going through hell and it literally was like the worst, worst nightmare you could ever dream by a factor of like thousands and thousands. It was almost if people ever have terror nightmares. It's similar to that, but even worse. Some people told me over the years, these past few years, they, they felt as though I was in the Lord's arms and then coming back, going through hell just to get back here. I thought about that and then it's a possibility and I don't know if it's in scripture or not, but that's what it felt like coming back and I was combative some of the times coming back and I think the main reason was I was in so much peace earlier blood sugar reactions. After college, I ended up getting married having kids. Prior to having kids, we were living in Saugus, three-story, two-family home. And I was working long hours during the day. And this is coming up to the out-of-body experience, near, near-death experience that I'm going to totally describe to you in full detail as best as I can. So I, I was coming home from work and I ended up, I ended up being really tired. As all the diabetics, the type 2s and the type 1s out there, you guys all know the signs of low blood sugar. You have all different types of signs in your body that they indicate your blood sugar is going low. One of mine was being exhausted and being very tired. And unfortunately, in the situation when I came back, came home from work, probably like a 10-hour day work Monday through Fridays, I ended up just going up to the third floor and, and laying down in the bed for a nap. That was probably the worst thing to do as a diabetic and not actually eat anything. So I, I went into a low blood sugar reaction. At that point, my wife ended up coming into the room. And I don't know how, how that happened and how she got me out of the bed, but she did, which was, I think, all by itself 
maybe I wasn't fully unconscious at the time in the bed. I remember us coming out into the hallway of the bedroom up on the third floor. There's a railing and a winding stairway that comes down onto the second floor. And we were right at the edge of the stairway, and I was facing her. And I had my right hand out to her, just reaching for her. And she was right in front of me, and her back was to the back. Her back was facing the um, the bedroom entrance. And that point, I could see my I could see my body. I could see myself coming out of my body, which was really unbelievable. It was insane. I could actually start to see our part of my body in my arm reaching out to her and I was being lifted out of my body I was being lifted up higher into the hallway ceiling higher up and I could see from a 3d perspective downwards towards my actual body still standing holding out my arm to my wife my body wasn't collapsed or on the floor it was still standing and that's critical on this story for you all to know because um I'll tell you as we go along and I was I was out of the body I was up high in the ceiling looking down reaching out to her it was shocking at the time but amazing all all by itself in an instant I lost sight of all of it and that's where things got remarkable I was in some form of it was like a whirlwind of a tunnel I would describe it as a tornado sweeping me away it was massive but it was also violently turning the tornado or the whirlwind and i was in like this full tunnel of a whirlwind and i remember specifically and it was the laughter of children started resonating around and i was in full spirit full full soul i would say at the time i couldn't see any of my physical body anymore and it resonated the laughter the pureness the pureness of the laughter of a child or many children. We're not talking about the laughter of like an eight-year-old or a deceptive laughter or an evil laughter, a pure laughter like a three, four-year-old laughter. Purest of all types of innocent laughter was resonating all around me. Remarkably, it was resonating through my entire spirit and soul. I could feel it. And it reminded me as I reflected back after this NDE experience out of body, I reflected back on, there's a scripture, I think it's in Matthew, about how the the disciples are all arguing who's going to be in the right hand chair of the next to the Lord Christ. And Christ said, listen to me, until you all become like children, none of you will enter the kingdom of heaven. It so much reminded me, the innocence that flowed through me in spirit reminded me how simple, how simple and carefree and loving i needed to be on this earth it was amazing to get that affirmation that confirmation just by the simplistic laughter of children flowing through your soul it was unbelievable and the next thing was the peace and the love of god filling my entire soul and i mean to the magnitude that the english language words can't even comprehend in size the, the love of God entering in me, one with me, was so unbelievable in that moment. It was so massive. I mean, massive beyond beyond comprehension. Nothing on earth could ever duplicate it in any love act or any love moment in anyone's lives. I did write a book on this topic of my before life and my NDEs and my afterlife. And I describe it in quantitative ways. Because I'm an engineer, and I just try to quantitatively give you an idea of how much God loves you, how much the love of Him is filled within your soul, and how much it's so massive, and its power is even a magnitude beyond that. It's insane. And so I try to describe it on a micro scale to a macro scale measurement in my book on God's love and how great it is, spirit as where I'm in this big, you know, sweeping tunnel with him, one with the Lord, one with him. And instantly I'm kind of worried about his power, which is just absolutely insane. It's unremarkable. It's, it's, I, I couldn't believe it. And so I'm, I'm having a section in, in this NDE being with God, 
and I get a moment where, first off, his love is so incredible. It's so simplistic, but pure. And the extent of it, of the pureness, is so complicated and complex. But it's so, so simple. It fell into me after the simplicity of the laughter of the child. It like connected in through that. And so when I grasped how simple the Lord's love was, but the magnitude of it soaking through my entire soul, I was in a form of regret almost. And I'm like, wow, I, I did it all wrong. I was in my soul and in my mind with the Lord being with me in one. I was saying to myself, I did this all wrong. I did everything wrong. I did it the wrong way. I didn't know it was this simple. I didn't know his love simple. It was amazing to experience it and for me to share it to you all. Understanding it to that level of magnitude, but the simplicity of his, of his love for just you and for what I was thinking in spirit of what I was not doing on earth and how I thought love was on earth compared to what he really wants us to be like through him with his love. So I got a moment which was amazing to be able to, I learned some things, I learned so many things during this experience with the Lord. And I got a moment to actually have a thought or a question, you know, and I was surprised in itself that I got to be able to, with all this massive complexity and all this confusion, I wouldn't say confusion, but all this so much of God's love within me, I was able to collect my own self. I can't really say what that question was. What was unbelievable about it was before I even thought of the question, before I can even mentally think about it, the Lord answered it instantaneously. It's telepathic communication throughout my whole entire soul. I felt the answer through my whole entire soul instantly, automatically throughout through him as i reflected on this in my later years after this nde i've been telling everyone that you know god hears your voice knows and hears you he also can hear your thoughts every single thought in your mind in going a step further into this experience with the lord in this nde i was also being shown like instantly life moments like quickly running through my spirit of all these life moments that were happening. People, if you know the NDE uh, groups and inherit stories, they would, I would think they would call it life reveal. Some people in, in our Christian faith would call it judgment. And I was able to feel throughout my soul all these moments fluttering through my soul. And behind it all was God and all of his love encompassing me in the fullness of reassurance, but allowing me to see everything and feel the moments of my life and, and the decisions I was making mentally, verbally with others and how it affected others and how not on living in the flesh moments, just as well, I was seeing those and seeing how it affected, but also love moments and all those life reveal fluttering going by through my soul. It was astonishing. It wasn't long either. It was just a really quick movie. It was insane. But what was so overwhelming was I could feel his love enwrapped in me during all those moments. And you have the feeling of, wow, I couldn't believe I did that to that individual running through you. He let you feel. He lets you feel what you've done. And he also loves you throughout letting you go through all those experiences. And it's truly unbelievable. And on earth, you know, coming back, obviously I was, I was knowing that Everything we say, everything we do, he knows all. Everything we think, he knows all. He knows it. And I tell people, even on Facebook and all the social media accounts, he asks people for prayer. But what people don't know is if any of you go on any type of group, Facebook, or any type of Facebooks, or asking people for prayers and you're telling them why, they have to read that. And they have to know that knowledge in their minds of your request. And God is listening to your mind as you're reading those prayer requests anywhere or thinking of somebody. God is listening to you in your mind on all those requests. So when people ask you to pray and you think you need to physically pray, 
I respond in the prayer request and most of my Christian groups on Facebook. So I'm like, me reading this, the Lord is hearing me of your request of your needs. I will also still pray for you. And so I learned that in this NDE that, you know, telepathically, he's answering me throughout instantly. And he also knows everything in my mind current that I'm thinking. I teach in my church at uh, in Sterling, St. Richard's, and I've been teaching for about 12 years there, confirmation classes. And I've gone up from fourth grade all the way up to 10th grade. But then these last 10 years have been mainly on confirmation classes. And the kids don't know this. They don't know that actually God knows of your thoughts. And, you know, I talk to these kids about, you know, the way that they act and how they are. And, and there was this one girl that said to me, she's like, well, I'm very kind all the time. I said, you are. And she suggested, and ironically, her, her name was Mary, which was amazing all by itself in having this conversation with her. And she's a 10th grader. She was very smart. And she said, yeah, I'm the most peaceful, nicest person. I said, well, let's say you have someone that's not so nice to you and come up to you and do something to you or say something to you. In your mind, are you thinking about that person? And she said, yes. And I said, well, what are you thinking? She goes, are you thinking you're upset with them and you're, you don't want to say something to them that's coming into your mind? And she said, yes. I said, do you know that the Lord hears all your thoughts? And I explained to her what I just explained to you. And she, her face was still and her jaw just slightly went down. And I said, remember, our minds with God as well and our soul, absolutely. So in, in the ND, after the, the life reveal section of it, was at the moment where I was literally seeing the whiteness in front of me. And I, I couldn't comprehend what it was. And then I saw pure, pure white robe. It was the whitest robe, the whitest purest, cleanest white, the brightest thing I've ever seen. It was just amazing to see this white robe. And it was it was in sight and where I could see the middle of the robe. Like my head was at a vision. It was at a, a certain point of vision where I was below the waist, probably in the knee section of the robe. And I was looking up and I looked up and saw the face of Christ, but I actually didn't see it. I couldn't see the face of Christ. I could only see so much brightness, like sun, like bright, bright sun. I am like this, barely being able to look, like looking at the sun. I could grasp maybe the corner of a structured jawline or a fraction of the eyebrow in looking at the face of Christ. And it was so amazingly so close up to me that I could see the corners of the elbow, of the shoulders of the robe in partially any peripheral view from that. It was Christ in, the, in his robe was right there in front of me. In the face was impossible to see. It was just amazing. Amazing all by itself. The white was so pure. Things were exponentially, insanely grandiose, I would say, in whiteness, in the glaze of the face that you couldn't see. I was talking to a few priests in the last few years, I didn't really talk of my NDE story for a long time. And I was talking to a few priests recently about this experience. And they priests listen to a whole bunch of stories, and they know a lot from the stories, similar to this tube channel. And one priest explained to me that he said, there's a reason you, you didn't see the Lord's face. Why is that? And he says, because you were to come back. He goes, if you were to see his face, he would most likely be in heaven. Now, there are other people that I've discussed with this, and they said, well, some NDEs saw Christ's face. And I know that there are other NDE stories that some children have seen the face of Christ, and other people have as well, and I'm not sure why I was not unable to. But I knew it was him. Throughout my soul, I could feel his presence of Christ. It was insane, unbelievable. I know there's NDE stories out there. People say they would wish they'd never come back. And I am too in that same in that same way. When you have the Lord's love throughout your soul, there's nothing in comparison. You're at peace. You're in no pain. There's no aches. There's no worries. There's no time. There's just pureness of love. One with God.
which happens to be the title of my book. It took me a couple of years to write, finally, my only one. So inside my NDE, when, when I'm the fullness of the Lord was within me, and his love was so unbelievable throughout my soul, right? It was incredible. The love of God, one with me in my soul, bringing me back to all the other NDEs I've had. That love was so pure and so intense. It correlated identically, like precisely. All my other NDEs, when I was feeling no pain, I was feeling no harm. I was feeling pure peace and saturated with love. I can only feel all those NDEs, how it correlates to this one last NDE I had with God. And the rest of them, the Lord was, to me, just holding me in his arms. And I correlated so well with the true love of God and the NDA I just described. So it makes sense coming out of those insulin reactions, or the low blood sugar reactions or what we call them, that it was combative because I didn't want to go away from that. And all those ones that I wasn't, had that great, great experience of being with God, I was in the presence of him in all those past low blood sugar reactions. I was in full protection of his love and glory, and it correlated identically to my last NDE that I described. And it all came together. And where it was all those different times, and it just, I had the ability of friends and families that would administer sugar to me and those, all those other low blood sugar reactions to get me out of them. And so I do feel it would be quite possible in any of those reactions, those low blood sugar reactions, that if I wasn't able to have a family or friend, family member, a loved family member being there and trying to get me out, putting sugar into my mouth, getting me out of those low blood sugar reactions, I would probably have an, a full ND experience. I was coming out of college. I went to a community college before I went to a, a four-year college school. I was having a low blood sugar at lunch. And of course, it, again, revolved around not eating enough. I had a good friend there from high school that went, and I ended up going back to the house. And I had classes in the afternoon. But you're in a low blood sugar reaction. I drove home, and luckily I got home safe. But I passed out in my parents' living room. I was in a full body sweat, soaking sweat. And I was blacked out. All I remember is that peace and that love and the pureness of no harm, nothing in mind and spirit. And my friend Jim came and he said afterwards, you know, being taken care of, Jim told me, he goes, I was concerned because he knew he could tell a little bit that I was not right leaving community college. And he ended up coming, checking on me on at my house, parents house. And so he's the one that called the ambulance and He's the one that, that was trying to put orange juice in me, try to get it in my gums and get me out of my uh, low blood sugar reaction. And that one was a little bit more serious because I was unconscious in a coma for hours, probably at least six hours. I do want to talk about, if we can, about some of my ways in which I was kind of praying to God in my early teens and or late teens and 20s. And it wasn't really a full relationship and connection with him. Like, there were signs and symbols, but I didn't really correlate to them until, like, these last 20 years, which is completely different, but full in signs and understandings and knowing of God's knowledge. So the intensity of it can correlate after the NDE. In my teens and 20s, of course, I've told you that I've, I've been to church and gone to church, and we all fall astray at times. And, and I have. I mean, going to college, I was not as involved in my faith going to church until I started um, getting involved with my wife, getting married. But in my teens and in my 20s, I've had so many circumstances where certain friends and family members were ill and sick and, and almost on not living anymore, basically in the hospital and going to die. And I would be angry. I would think a lot of Christians get angry at God when a true friend or a loved one is sick and knocking on death's door, obviously. And I remember a time on how I normally didn't have a really strong prayer practice, I would say, with God. But 
I had this weird communication where I could just talk to him in mostly in, in asks or in anger. When I had a relative that was sick in the hospital and I remember driving to work and I was just yelling at God, resonating through the car and yelling at him, saying, not now, her time is not done. She has more to offer through your will. And I'm screaming and crying all the way to work. It was like a 20 minute ride. And I could feel in the car and in my mind and spirit, I could feel the strong sense of what I would call now a connection. I could feel the intensity of the presence of the Lord through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, in crying and screaming, riding 70 miles an hour on the highway, yelling and screaming and crying to see my family member. And I had gotten to work and it was late. I was working second shift, I believe. And I feel in, in my soul, I had to go see her and I had to go to the hospital because the hospital was only two towns away. And so at 8 o'clock, I, I ran up there. I forgot what visiting hours were. And I ran up there and I asked the nurse. And the lights were all kind of out up in this location of the hospital where she was. And I asked the nurse, I go, please, listen to me. I just want to see her. I'm not going to go in there and bother her. I just want to see if I can just pray over her. And it came to that, to the point where, you know, I'm in my 20s. And I'm wanting to pray over my cousin. And so uh, she allowed me. It was past the village and I was and the room was dark. And the light from the hallway ended up shining like right to her front of her bedside. It was like a little sign. And I just stood there at her doorway and I prayed. And I prayed to God and I asked him to help her. And I said the Our Father a few times. And I just stood there thinking, asking the Lord. And this was before my NDE. And I left the hospital and went about my days working still and a few days later my mom informed me that she's doing much better and she's coming out of the hospital and I just looked up when I heard the news I just looked up and I said thank you you know some of you might think well this is coincidences you know that are possible around for all this but there are way too many things that have happened in my life before the NDE and afterwards with that sense of the connection and having with your spirit and the Lord in prayer, it intensified after my NDE. I could pray. I could pray for people and I could feel the Lord within me in mind and spirit in certain parts or certain days of praying for individuals during my daily prayers. I could honestly feel, feel the Lord inside of me or in my mind at times, I could even see the whiteness of the robe. In certain situations, I'm not sure why, but um, after my NDEs, her life intensified a dramatic level. And to tell everybody that God is always with you in spirit and mind, some of you don't know it. And if you understand what I just told you in detail about the love of the Lord for just you in heaven, and all he wants is the relationship. He wants you to open the door. He's been knocking. And in prayer alone is where you can connect. I write in the book, in the final to chapter 6, I pray on a daily basis, either in mind or whisper. And I start out with devotionals. And I connect in certain steps of my prayer process. And I describe it in detail, what it feels like. And what to start having a conversation with God I was doing the steps earlier in life, but not all of them. And I, I read a book, Matt Kelly, a uh, dynamic Catholic. I read his book, I Heard God Laugh, and it talks about how we all don't know how to pray. All Christians don't have a clue how to pray and literally connect with God. Seriously, in spirit and mind, the grace and the glory come into you in those prayer moments. If you have that type of connection, through this process, you are at awe. You actually break down of the gloriness of the Lord in your mind and soul while talking with Him in through this process. I wholeheartedly worked on that last chapter to identify those sections in prayer. And it could be anywhere from five minutes to a half hour. There are times I'm walking in my field 
you know, back of my house, I have 10 acres out there, intercessory prayer for certain individual, and it's an hour walk or two hours. In that connection, like I told you about, in the car ride to work, when my cousin was in the hospital, that kind of connection, that's what the Lord wants to have for you. And once you have that in prayer and connecting with them, your lives change remarkably. You see things in people and in nature. You see markers of the Lord in your days. These markers of individuals that come up to you, you have a peace of his glory and love in you automatically. Sometimes even if you don't connect with the Lord and just pray, you have that peace in you that changes a ripple effect of all your interactions of other people throughout the day. Trust me when I tell you this. I've been doing this prior to my NDE in some ways, and I've had some unbelievable connection with God these last 20 years since my last NDE that I just fully described are remarkable days, amazing days. And there was something I learned from I'm in Christian groups in Facebook. I learned someone was telling me about this one phrase that they use at the end of their prayer. It's really cool and interesting. And they asked the Lord to show how amazing today is going to be. I started doing this a um, couple months ago, six months or eight months ago. And once in, not I don't do it all the time, but on certain days I remember praying and I would say, Lord, Show me how amazing today is going to be. And I have to tell you, the times I've done that, those days are unbelievable. Things that I see, there's a UK phenomenon class that's called Alpha that I've run at my church about five or six years ago for about six, seven years. And Nikki Gumbel is the person that's on YouTube. It's, it's great. It's a great videos on basic Christianity and about God's love in Christ. And he says in one of his videos, he's putting on the eyeglasses of Christ, you know, and you see things after prayer that I'm talking to you about, a prayer process, and you can do it in the morning anytime. You get to see things that are unbelievable in people and in the way you feel automatically. You, you don't have to forcefully, you're not going to forcefully try to be nice. If you're not connected with God, you know what I mean. You're on that sickle days of being nice, trying to be nice, and then you're worn out. But God wants a relationship so you can have his love, his righteousness. You can be cleansed in prayer and have his righteousness within you. And you automatically, in the morning and starting your day, you're already affecting many other people. And then suddenly, acting in that way automatically because you have Christ in you, you become a Christian, Christ-like, and people see that. It's infectious. And then you see many things from others in Christ in them, and most of them don't even know. It's such a, an amazing life to have the Lord within you. And it's the connection and the relationship that I found exponentially unbelievable in prayer. And again, in my book, I in detail about it. So I bring you along the process and what I felt and what you should feel in those sections in prayer to get you to the righteousness and the glory within you. And trust me, once you feel the Lord within you in prayer, you will probably never stop trying to pray on a daily basis. And that once you see the things that I've seen and witnessed in healing prayers and thinking of others and being like Christ around others automatically, your days are going to be unbelievable. The whole perception of dying, everybody fears death. So I was in that, in that same realm in a way, but I still had a connection with God. I had some knowledge and connection of God in some way prior to my NDE, but I was also on the cusp of kind of fearing death and what death would be like. But the NDE, once you have God with you, one with you, throughout, you know, the fear of death 
is eradicated. You're not worried. There's one thing I wanted to explain, which was critical in the NDE, is that when I was up above in the ceiling, looking down at my body, reaching out, my body was not collapsed or dead. It was still alive. So in that experience with God, I come to a realization in that whole experience that he took me prior to witnessing and feeling death. He took me, he took my soul out of me prior to me allowing me not to feel death. And I came to that realization coming out of my NDE years later. And I started telling my parish and I'm with the Knights of Columbus in my parish. I'm a third degree knight. And I've had certain members of our council come up to me in my house and we had massive conversation about death. And they told, they start telling me stories about their mother dying or their aunt dying and being in the hospice room, you know, moments before they're, they're dying or, you know, minutes or day or 30 minutes before their death. And they told me these remarkable stories about how, you know, the door slightly opened and his mother was at peace. You could tell. And, you know, then minutes later, she passed. He, he was literally on my porch for 40, 45 minutes, Steve, and he was telling me, Darren, I'm telling you right now, off of what you told the whole council, I did a, um, a faith story of, of my NDE with the council a few years back. He said, I tell you, he says, she was taken before she died. I knew it. I saw it. And in my book, there's a friend that has a friend that's a chaplain in a hospice. And I tell the stories of his experiences, of what he's seen similar to what I know, what I love to share with everyone is that to me, I know for a fact to rest your worries, rest them all, that the Lord takes you and doesn't let you experience death. He takes you from this life to everlasting life in love with him and peace with him and the joy and comfort wrote your soul with him it's truly if you talk to any nde um, most of them say they don't fear death whatsoever anymore and that's the reason i do feel though in the past prior to my last nde i think you know no one wants to suffer i would want to suffer a long-term illness and then die so that that would be kind of my worry suffering painfully prior to dying, but I know the Lord will take you prior to experiencing your last breath. Doesn't let that happen. I know other NDE stories doesn't let that happen. Especially out of body experiences when you see your body still alive, reaching out, standing up. We want to talk fractionally of seconds or minutes. The stories I've heard throughout these last 20 years are amazing that it was you know five ten minutes duration and they know these strange phenomena that happen in the room and i'm not saying that probably happens all the time but to tell my story and to, to hear other people's stories it's remarkable how many other millions of stories there are out there on final moments of death that correlate to this acknowledgement of what I experienced. People don't like to talk. And, and it's the same with Christians. We don't have a group to go chat about scripture, about God, about experiences. There are so many stories out there. It's kind of like you in the small town of like Sterling. Like there's 8,000 of us here in this beautiful farm town west of Boston about an hour. If you don't open up that level of communication, you won't experience all the other stories of what people have in their lives on these monumental topics of death and of God and of, of prayer, of scripture, healing. I remember just not so long ago, a friend of mine at work, I was working with her. I'm with the medical device industry for insulin pens in Clinton, Mass. And we make insulin pens for the world, mass produce them. And ironically, a type 1 diabetic that gets to work in my field for insulin 
for all diabetics around the world. Ironically, it's a blessing. But I was working with this friend of mine on a project for a good over two years, and I know her very well. And there was one day I walked in, and, and I came up to her desk, and you can tell when someone hasn't slept all night long. And her hair was disheveled. She had no makeup on. You can tell when someone's been crying for hours. And I could tell Jen was a mess. And I was worried. And I came up to her desk and I'm like, what's wrong? Are you okay? You know, is everything all right? What's going on? Because Jen is really a model. She looks beautiful. A beautiful young lady. And to look her looking like this, I knew that there was something terribly wrong. And she was starting to cry and tell me about her, her two-year-old daughter, Lily. And she had all these these sores on her on her hands and going up her wrist, I guess. And all in her mouth, like the full gums and in her throat, she had all these blisters and sores everywhere. And Jen was in the emergency room and they couldn't administer medication to her because she was so young. They felt as though she could asphyxiate on her own saliva through the night so I think it was children's Tylenol was the only thing that she could give her and and she wasn't eating she couldn't eat she was so much in pain and crying and I was literally emotionally distraught because I I love Jen she was a great friend and we worked side by side and still is and so I said to her I said you know what and I, I grabbed her. I said, "Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray for Lily tonight. I'm gonna pray for you, and I'm gonna pray for Lily." And she thanked me, you know. And uh, Jen told me, you know, working with her on day to day, we talked about faith a little bit. She told me her her grandmother used to take her to church when she was little, but she no longer was following her faith, you know. And so I told her I was gonna pray because she knew what that meant. And so I remember leaving work that day and I ended up, I'm only five, 10 minutes from the house. It was very convenient. And I, I started praying as I was walking out in, in this process, I was telling you of, you know, connecting with God in prayer in the steps I would go through and the intercessionary section of the ask. I was in deep, I would say connection, just like the car ride for praying for my cousin. I could feel the presence thick like it was you could feel in your mind in your soul just the sense of the presence and i was asking god and i was crying driving back to the house and i had to pull over to ask him to intervene into lily's soul and to cleanse her and to get into the cells of the blisters all over her hands and in her mouth and, and throat and to slowly eradicate them throughout the night and to give her the peace and love for her, to intervene, the Lord, and bring your grace and glory upon her, and to give her rest that night to help with his intervention and his grace and glory to hail her through the night. So I had to go up to Devon's, which is a couple towns north the next morning, but I was praying alongside the road of, right outside my house and kind of, you know, phasing in and out of that prayer and the connection with the Lord and came back into my driveway and kept on thinking of Lily through the night because I know, Lord, here's our thoughts. And I kept on thinking about her and, and asking the Lord over and over again until I finally passed out and went to bed. And I woke up the next morning, go up to Devon's, and I'm up there by 7 o'clock in the morning. And I had to come back to Clinton where Jen was in the late morning. And uh, she's texting me as I'm getting back to Clinton in bold really bold text and everyone knows about texting and usually if you get bold text repetitively sentences that means something seriously wrong so i dropped off my computer ran upstairs to her office and i can see her and she's crying she's at her desk and she looks just disheveled the day before and she's yelling at me and we're in office cubicles so she's literally just kind of yelling in a whisper loud noise like, what what did you do She's going like that repetitively as I'm walking towards her death. And I come up to her and now she's, it gets louder and louder as I'm coming to her desk. She's like, what did you do? What did you do? She's crying. And it's like the next sentence is like a, when you're crying, you can't really talk sentence. 
what did you do? She said. Is this everything okay as I'm walking towards her? Is everything okay? She goes, what did you do? And I, and I said to her, I, said, I prayed. I prayed for Lily. What's going on? And she said, she's with my mom because the mom takes care of Lily during the day while Jen works. She was my mom. They all disappeared. They all disappeared. They all went away. She's, her blisters are gone. And it was around lunchtime and she's eating popsicles. And she got that cheerful laugh. She's eating popsicles. And I'm like, what did you do? I said, I, I prayed. I prayed for her through the night. And I said, Jen, you know, this is a sign. These, the Lord gives you markers in your life. His intervention, you know? And I said, this is a sign. I just asked for her. It's remarkable. Well, I mean, to me, from all these experiences, I know the Lord wants the connection. I know that God loves you. The magnitude that I know that he loves me in heaven is amazing. And he loves you that much. And he wants you to have a relationship with him. He wants you to connect with him and help you in your struggles, in your pain, in your grief moments of your life. And he wants you to just open the door and connect with him. Your life will be transformed in ways that I hope you learn in me just expressing in these stories of what happened to me.